So the lawyer for the whistleblower was tweeting about this a lot yeah. in the early days of this administration. What's that tell you? Well, in January 2017, right about the time uh, President Trump was being inaugurated. And what it tells me is that uh, Mark Zaid was speaking there for the entire anti-Trump resistance. And he's talking about we're proceeding with essentially a coup to remove this president from office. But let's pause it right here so people understand there was a very big, significant, legitimate political event in November of 2016. 63 million Americans elected Donald J. Trump into the American presidency. He is therefore entitled to serve out four years of that presidency. And yet we know that in January 2017, not just Mark Zaid, but a lot of Democrats were determined to stop this presidency. And it was always a question back then, what is the point of the Russian collusion narrative that the press was running? And the point was to get to an impeachment of this president to overturn that 2016 election. That was the goal from the beginning, and that is the goal as we sit Sounds here. Sounds a little bit what Mark Meadows just said a moment ago. Here's some of the tweets. You mentioned January 2017. This from January 30th of that year. Coup has started first in many steps. Hashtag rebellion. Impeachment will follow ultimately. Hashtag lawyers. Here's another one. June 19th, same year. 45 years from now, we might be recalling stories regarding the impeachment of Donald Trump. All be old, but will be worth the wait. Yeah, well, they have never stopped doing this. This is the resistance. And, you know, consider what Donald Trump did. In a sense, a coup is an illegal overthrow of an existing government. Donald Trump overthrew the Obama presidency in the sense that one of the first things he did was withdraw us from the Paris Climate Accord, which was in the news this week. They will now formally begin the withdrawal from that. He overturned the Iranian nuclear deal. He started to reverse all of the Obama regulations on the energy sector. That was a legal overturning of a pre-existing presidency. What they are trying to do here is illegally drive this guy from office for taking down what the things that the Barack Obama what did. What you're driving at is a storyline Republicans will try and draw out during the hearing, and that would be a policy dispute with regard to Ukraine. Here's one of them now. Byron York uh, writes rather than the Washington Examiner, testimony how Trump helped Ukraine. And he goes in through all the transcripts about the Javelin anti-tank missiles, uh, which is lethal aid that was delivered to the Ukrainians so they can fight back with the Russian tanks. Here in Byron argues that you can't dispute that the president was not tougher than the previous administration. And all three witnesses said, have said apparently it was a substantial improvement. It was more than just blankets, which is what they were getting before. And that is exactly why they needed to have public hearings rather than these private hearings. We went through the private hearings. Did any, and the Democrats were leaking the parts of the testimony from those private hearings that they wanted to make the president look bad. If it had been a public hearing with all the American people sitting there watching it, they would have seen Ambassador Taylor say that the Trump policy was an improvement over the Obama policy in terms of helping Ukraine. So at least it mitigated some of the charges against and him. And what here. Adam Schiff is going to say is that the facts largely cannot be disputed with regard to the investigation of Joe Biden. Is that where Democrats go? You would imagine, yes. Yeah, they keep going there, but they, it would be just, they keep undermining their own impeachment process by keeping it private like this and trying to spin it. And then they're not changing many minds at all by doing that. Dan Henninger, Wall Street Journal. We'll see in the end whether or not minds are changed.